Thanks Herbert and Jens for these fantastic insights. The final session before the live Q&A, we will focus on applications. We will hear from two experts, one taking a deep dive into the world of 3D marking, the other talking about marking and the medical device manufacturing industry. As well, we will have the opportunity to take another peek in one of the application labs. So let's jump into the applications and welcome Dietrich Tonius. Thank you, Alexander. This presentation explains how advanced laser marking techniques enable the marking of large and three-dimensional objects. Laser marking is a standard technique for adding small marks like barcodes, like two-dimensional codes, serial numbers, or logos onto manufactured goods. Compared to conventional printing techniques, laser marking is very flexible and does not use any consumables. It is therefore only logical that laser marking is used also for adding other textual and graphic features. Often this requires marking objects that are greater than the marking field size. And in many cases, it will require marking objects having curved surfaces that are partially out of the focal distance of a laser marker. In this presentation, we will discuss three solutions to these challenges. Step and repeat marking, twin technology, and smart map 3D. Let's start with step and repeat marking. And let's assume we want to mark our amplifier logo across a marking area that is three times as big as a marking field size of the laser marker. With Coherence Visual Laser Marker software, this can be accomplished by using just one layout. Here, the amplifier logo extends over three marking fields. These so-called laser marker uh, shadows are indicated by the three squares and the layout editor. Layouts can be segmented in X and Y with any number of laser marker shadows. Please note, apart from linear axis, rotary axis too can be supported and allowed to mark work pieces from multiple directions. Here is a practical example. Two panels uh, of home appliances are loaded into a laser marking system. And the size of the marking fields indicated by the blue square. And obviously the marking field is too small to allow marking the panels in a single step. The marking sequence rather must be split up into two or three steps. The marking system is equipped with a linear axis that can move the laser marker from left to right and right to left. This axis is controlled by our laser marker software. This is a close-up view of our marking layout editor. The layout of both panels is imported as a CAD file and the three red elements show the marking content. The white area indicates the current uh, marking shadow and the software automatically clips the layout at the correct locations. This example does not require this clipping to be very accurate. If needed, however, accurate field calibration of scanner and optics ensure seamless stitching of marking segments. As mentioned before, step and repeat marking. Now we can see a, a brief video to um, see the result. So the panels are marked in three steps. So on the next slide, um, we see an alternative approach. As mentioned before, step and repeat marking is possible with rotary axis too. So in this case, parts can be marked from multiple directions. If marking from only two directions is required, a beam switch is an alternative to using rotary axis. And this simplifies material handling. So the second example is twin technology. Twin configurations are unique new technology. The twin was prim primarily designed for serialization marking of semiconductor devices, but twin technology offers interesting features for other industries too. Instead of using two-step marking, the two laser markers of a twin cooperate and simultaneously mark left and right side of the full marking layout. This way, marking speed is doubled. A special feature of a twin are its simple hardened software interfaces that are equivalent to single laser markers. Like in multiple step marking, a twin operates with just one marking layout. If serialization of components is required, users can take advantage of the VLM matrix object feature. 
And in consequence, from hard and software point of view, twins are as easy to integrate as single laser markers. Unlike multi-step marking, twins utilize overlapping marking fields. In the overlap area, both laser markers operate cooperatively. This allows balancing the marking load for both lasers in case left and right side of the layout require different marking times. The assignment of marking features to left and right laser is done easily and in certain cases even happens automatically. This example illustrates the capabilities of a twin. The keyboard fits into the rectangular marking field of a twin laser marker. There's only one layout for the keyboard. F theta objectives are selected that offer a large overlap area. And in this overlap area, individual characters are assigned to right and left laser marker. So indicated as green and uh, red characters. The load of both laser markers is balanced to have the same marking time for both lasers. And in the video, it shows you the result. So the keyboard is marked in parallel by both lasers using just one layout. This example illustrates the capabilities of a twin. The third example is SmartMap 3D. SmartMap 3D allows marking three-dimensional objects by modifying the marking layout to avoid distortions of the marking pattern. And it enables adjusting the vertical focus position in real time. SmartMap 3D is easy to use and offers a 3D preview editor. Spheres and cuboids, cylinders, and cones are standard geometries available in the VLM software. They are to define, they are easy to define by, by a few parameters. In this example, barcodes are marked onto a cylinder. The surface of the cylinder is flattened onto a plane and shown in the 2D drawing editor. In this editor, the marking contact can simply be superimposed onto the cylinder's surface. And the preview editor gives a realistic representation of how the real mark will look like. UV mapping is used whenever freeform surface must be marked. UV mapping allows unfolding the triangulated surface mesh of the object and mapping a texture to the mesh. This technique is well known um, in computer graphics. This example shows a more detail how this looks like. The unfolded mesh of the object surface can, um, can further be modified by moving individual vertices to other locations. And this way, the marking results can be tailored to avoid undesired distortion effects. Okay, a hands-on example of smart map that we will certainly be helpful to better understand this technology. Therefore, Daniel will now give you a demonstration of smart map 3D. Thanks, Dietrich. Now we are back in the lab for the second demo. This time, I'm going to show you marking on 3D surfaces. Again, we are using the exact mark 210. This one is equipped with the 50 watt fiber Vadia laser, a TTL camera system like we saw in the demo earlier today, and more important here, the fast focusing module for marking on 3D surfaces. For this demonstration, we have prepared cubes made of different metals. Aluminum, steel, and copper. And now I'll show you how to set up the software for that. In the previous lab demo, we saw the laser framework environment. Now I'm going to focus on the Visual Laser Marker software editor and the Smart Map 3D feature. VLM can be divided into two software views the 3D view on the left side and the 2D drawing view on the right side. The user has the choice to create 3D models inside VLM or to import existing CAD models. Available axes are directly visualized in the 3D view and the fast focusing module stroke is visualized as colored box. The connection between the 3D model and the 2D drawing view is realized by the mapping feature of VLM. The marking content is created or imported as usual. The software supports different file formats like DXF or PDF. In the 2D view, you have the option to mark variable content like counters, 1D or 2D codes as you are used to with regular 2D drawings. 
after attaching the content to the unwrapped surface, you will get a live preview of the later marking results in the 3D view. Now I'm going to set up the layout of the cubes. As it's a regular solid, you can directly create inside with your laser marker. And you can use the arrow keys or the position fields to place it correctly. After unwrapping the surface in the 3D view, you can continue attaching the drawing in the 2D view. After you attach the drawing, you get a live preview of the outcome in your 3D view. In the next step, we assign laser parameters to the marking content. VLM supports either predefined tables or individual laser parameter settings. Here, with the Fiber 50 Varia, you have greater flexibility for various materials as it offers one more dimension of parameters for you. All you need to do in the 3D view is align the axis position to place the fast focusing module box somewhere around the marking content. Focus correction and marking content distortion are then done by the software automatically. I don't want to let you wait too long, so we are going to execute our already prepared file. The only thing missing now is to place the cubes into the machine according to the positions we defined in the software. Let's start the marking. As you can see, the outcome is always the same, no matter which material and regardless of the workpiece orientation. This was the second lab demo for today. Thank you very much for your attention. And now over to Thorsten Fairbach, who will talk about high contrast marking for medical devices. Thank you, Daniel. And hello to everybody again. In our last session, we will learn about high contrast permanent marking of medical devices. One of the applications I want to highlight the most because it refers to everything what we heard today already from the application performance increase to vision technology to verification. And this because of the needs of the medical device industry. So medical devices and instruments and implants are usually marked with lasers because it's mandatory to have a direct contrastful mark directly at the parts. That increases patient safety. We have, of course, a better leveraged quality control because we can do the documentation of every single part with its individual serial number, and it improves counterfeit safety and as well as a kind of marking tool. So authorities like the medical device regulation, FDA, they clearly mandate the fact that laser marking is the most ideal solution in order to do this permanent mark. And therefore, in order to have an individual track and traceability of every single device, they release the UDI, the so-called so unique device identification. So this is an identifier directly marked on the part, and usually nanosecond lasers do the mark on medical devices, implants, and instruments. So what are the challenges for nanosecond lasers? Of course, first of all, it's an energy impact which causes a thermal stress on the material and a thermal, let's say, material change. 
So we have, of course, the challenge of maintaining the material properties. Material properties, of course, can be corrosion resistance, etc. The parts, because especially the surgical instruments are used in several treatments, they have to conduct several autoclaving cycles. So they are placed in a harsh environment where chemical stress and cleaning stress can fade the mark. The code itself, the UDI code, has to be readable over lifetime of the product. So that means we have to maintain the contrast. And as well, this result is usually certified and registered at the authorities in terms of the individual grading of the code. The positioning of the code due to the energy impact is also a question. So can we mark very fragile areas, very thin metals, etc.? No, we have to search for alternatives. So there is headroom where we can improve and innovate. And last but not least, due to the technology of the nanosecond lasers and the individual surface finishes of the medical devices, we have a narrow process window. So that means we have to very delicately control the actual process. So how do we overcome all these limits? By utilization of our ultra short pulse lasers. Utilization of picosecond lasers leave on stainless steel a very high contrast, extremely black mark. How we create this mark? It's a kind of nanostructure we create at the surface, the so-called LIPS, laser-induced periodical structure. And this nanostructure enhances the contrast by light trapping. That makes the angle of view also not impacting negative on the observation of the part or of the mark. So that means regardless how we hold it, regardless from which orientation we inspect the marking, it has a stable and harmonized black color. Another great advantage here is, and this is basically the main reason and the main benefit for these ultra short pulse lasers, we avoid this energy impact, the thermal impact. So that means we are not doing an annealing mark, we do just an ablation at the surface. So that means we do not change the formulation of the material. That means the corrosion resistance is greatly maintained over the lifetime of the product. Corrosion resistance, of course, it is important, clearly understand in the laser marking industries here as something where the material response can cause a potential threat, either by toxications, or as well by damaged readability or any negative factors. The ultra short pulse lasers produce minimal stress. So that means we can also select locations of marks which are very, very fragile, very, very thin sheet metal, etc., can be still marked with a great dark contrast. And the whole process has a very, very broad process window because here in this regard, the individual finishes of the surfaces, whether it's electro-polished or any other brushed surfaces, etc., has no impact on that. So what does this mean for the readability? If you have so much great advantages already heard, basically how's the interaction with the usual processes we find in the medical device industry? Passivation is definitely a subject. Passivation is a process which protects parts for corrosion. So that means passivation can take place before the marking is applied. Passivation can take place after marking is applied. And passivation doesn't have to take place just because of the marking. It can have other reasons like welding or any other mechanical treatment. So if we compare these two coupons here, we see that regardless whether it's passivated or not passivated before the marking, the marking with the picosecond laser here doesn't have any change in color and contrast. The other variant is the passivation after the mark. So that means we see here a data matrix code, clearly contrastful marked at the surface of the part. This goes into a chemical passivation bath at 7% uh, C to surf, uh, 220, 50, 20 minutes at 50 degrees, and we don't see any change in contrast. That means we have no fading by the passivation, the chemical process on the actual marking result. The other subject for fading could be the autoclaving I mentioned before. Here we put a marked part into multiple autoclaving passes. And we as well see here, first of all, there's no fading in the contrast. So it has a great maintained readability. And as well, there is no visible corrosion here to detect. So what is our solution in order to provide you a complete tool which is featuring all these things? It's our exact mark to 30 USB. It is 
a turnkey system, standalone system, with ultra short pulse laser marking system integrated. It has a comprehensive workspace phase, so we can use with single parts or pallets. It has linear axis for a subsystem or part motion. We can do the part fixturing and clamping inside. It has individual marking field sizes, can do 3D free for marking, and at the end is also equipped with vision systems for pre and post inspections. How does this look like in the field of the unique device identifier, which at the end is an authority decided solution? So that means we have somewhere a database where the product data input comes from. So that means we read from a database what kind of global table identification number, the so-called GTIN number, has to be used. This is then coded according to GS1 in the data matrix code are squared or rectangled, and after the marking with a picosecond laser here, read with a vision system in order to detect and verify the mark of the, or the coding content of the marked data matrix code. And this verified data is finally then as well uploaded into the original database where the documents got generated in order to have a safety check whether this is a closed loop from the beginning to the end with the right information. But it's not just the medical device industry who has highly interest in this kind of technology. So and therefore, we see that this kind of, let's say, standard solution in a tailored process scenario can be as well used in home appliances, on encoder marks, nameplates, etc. The flexibility of an ultra short pulse laser guarantees the variance in different materials. It's not just stainless steel, it's aluminium, anodized aluminium, titanium, copper, and various polymers and plastics. And last but not least, with the same laser and optical configuration offering such a great bandwidth of different possibilities and marking scenarios, it basically is a very economic and innovative solution, and it saves cost and increases workload and efficiency. So thank you very much, and I'm handing back to Alexander.